watch Ronaldo kick a football compared to you know Beckham at free kicks. One's not right and one's not wrong. It's just what works for that player at that time. And the best coaches help the players find the best way for them. The old analogy of there's one technical model to do something. If you watch all the top sportsmen in the world, they do everything slightly differently. So um, Tandorka holds the bat the wrong way around. If you went down to your local cricket club at the age of seven, their first thing they'd do would be turn his hand around in this country. You know, t so he's got the double V grip. Malinga bowls the ball sideways. Furyk's got the worst golf swing you know, in golf, yet yeah, it works for him. We've long kind of moved from scientific methodologies to you know, how, how do I train an athlete? How do I uh, put together a coaching plan? If you can't understand what the person at the center of this, your learner, needs, then, then a lot of that stuff becomes irrelevant. Andy Murray, you see, sort of get quite angry often in, in games and look up to his coaching team. Well, how do we get learners, uh, even at that elite level or, or at a participatory level, how do we get them to think about how I solve this problem myself? And, and I think traditional methods have long been coach-centred and they have wanted the coach to be in charge and, and almost be that knowledgeable person. We'd have people stood in certain places, we'd drill them, we'd make sure that they could you know, repeat a pass over 10 yards, over 20 yards, over 30 yards. And actually those things, in terms of learning, they take away decisions, problem solving, the ability of the learner to really uh, work through and understand for themselves the skill, the practice, the problem in front of them, how to solve that problem. And so good coaching moves beyond that coach-centred and towards that very learner-centred approach.